communist movement, having made a big fanfare for over a century, has brought mankind nothing but war, poverty, brutality, and dictatorship. With the collapse of the Soviet Union and the Eastern European Communist parties, this disastrous and outrageous drama finally entered its last stage by the end of the last century. No one, from the people to the general secretary of the CCP, believes in the myth of communism anymore. The communist regime came into being due to neither divine mandate nor democratic election. Today, with its ideology destroyed, the legitimacy of its reign is facing an unprecedented challenge. The Chinese Communist Party is unwilling to leave the historical stage in accordance with the current of history. Instead, it is using the ruthless methods developed during decades of political campaigns to renew its crazed struggle for legitimacy, revive its dead mandate, and continuously provide a living environment for the parasitic evil specter. In this historical moment today, it is especially important for us to understand clearly why the CCP acts like a band of scoundrels and to expose its villainous nature, so that the Chinese nation can achieve lasting stability and peace, enter an era free of the CCP as soon as possible, and construct a future of renewed national splendor. From the policy of improving the treatment for the intellectuals after the Hungarian Revolution in the 1950s, to the policy of plots of land for private use, free markets, and enterprises with responsibility for their own profits and losses, implemented in the rural villages after the Great Famine in the 1960s. From the movement of ideological emancipation after the Great Cultural Revolution in the 1970s, to the deepening reform after the Tiananmen Massacre in the 1980s. Throughout history, whenever the CCP encountered crises, it would demonstrate some traces of improvement, enticing people to develop illusions about the CCP. Without exception, though, the illusions were shattered time and time again. Today, the CCP has pursued short-term benefits, and in doing so, has produced a show of economic prosperity that has once again persuaded the people to believe in fantasies about the CCP. Let us look at what the People's Daily, the mouthpiece of the CCP, said in a front-page story on July 12, 2004. Quote, the historical dialectics have taught the CCP members the following. Those things that should be changed must change. Otherwise, deterioration will follow. Those that should not be changed must remain unchanged. Otherwise, it will lead to self-destruction. What is it that should remain unchanged? The People's Daily explains, quote, The party's basic line of one center, two basic points, must last solidly for 100 years without any vacillation. Unquote. Everything is clear. The communist evil specter's determination to maintain its collective interest and dictatorship never changes. The fundamental conflicts between the interest of the CCP and that of the nation and the people determine that this false prosperity will not last. The reform the CCP has promised has one purpose, to maintain CCP rule. It is a lame reform, a change in surface but not in substance. Underneath the lopsided development lies a great social crisis. Once the crisis breaks out, the nation and the people will suffer once again. It is true that communism has been defeated globally and is doomed to become more and more moribund. Nevertheless, the more corrupt a thing becomes, the more destructive it becomes during its struggle with death. With the change of leadership, the new generation of CCP leaders had no part in the communist revolution. 
and therefore have less and less prestige and credibility in managing the nation. Amidst the crisis of its legitimacy, the CCP's protection of the party interests has increasingly become the basic guarantee for maintaining the interests of individuals within the CCP. The CCP's nature is selfish. It knows no restraint. To discuss democratic improvements with the Communist Party is like asking a tiger to change its skin. During the conference of the Political Bureau of the CCP Central Committee after the Tiananmen Massacre, Deng Xiaoping mentioned two hands, one soft and flexible, and the other hard and stern. This is an analogy for the Communist Party's two-sided strategies. Its softer strategies include propaganda, united fronts, sowing dissension, espionage, instigating rebellion, double-dealing, getting into people's minds, brainwashing, lies and deception, covering up the truth, psychological abuse, and generating an atmosphere of terror. In doing these things, the CCP creates a syndrome of fear inside the people's hearts that leads them to easily forget the party's wrongdoings. These myriad methods could stamp out human nature and foster maliciousness in humanity. The CCP's hard tactics include violence, armed struggle, persecution, political movements, murdering witnesses, kidnapping, suppressing those who have a different opinion, armed attacks, periodic crackdowns, and on and on. These aggressive methods create and perpetuate terror. In practice, the CCP uses both soft and hard methods concurrently. Sometimes they would be relaxed in some instances, while strict in others. Or they would be relaxed on the outside, while stiff in their internal affairs. In a relaxed atmosphere, the CCP encountered the expression of different opinions. But, as if luring a snake out of its hole, those who did speak up would only be persecuted in the following period of strict control. A veteran official who had suffered torments in the Yan'an rectification movement recalled that when he was under intense pressure and was dragged and forced to confess, the only thing he could do was to betray his own conscience and make up lies. At first, he felt bad to be implicating and framing his fellow comrades. He hated himself so much that he wanted to end his own life. Coincidentally, a gun had been placed on the table. He grabbed it, pointed it at his head, and pulled the trigger. But the gun had no bullets. The person who investigated him walked in and said, It's good that you admitted what you've done was wrong. The party's policies are lenient. The CCP always first puts one in a death trap and then enjoys one's every pain and humiliation. When one reaches the limit and just wishes for death, the party feigns kindness, coming out to show one a way to live. It is said, better a live coward than a dead hero. One becomes grateful to the party as one's savior. According to modern medical studies, many victims of intense pressure and isolation fall prey to an abnormal sense of dependency on their captors. This is called the Stockholm Syndrome. The victim's moods, happiness or anger, 